Hello and welcome back to another Fido Daily. And uh, today we're coming at you with another Tristana game. And the people have requested it, and the people get what the people want. Uh, before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much for all the feedback that you guys gave in the comments of the last video. Um, I'll try and adopt it, try to make changes to make the you know the content as good as possible. And yeah, this game is an average of D2, D3 MMR. Uh, it's on my Smurf. Uh, I hasn't played any games this season. Maybe he's played one. It started in Emerald 1 though, so I believe it's uh, around D1, uh, maybe Evermar from last season, uh, was definitely decayed. But this game we're playing into Gragas, so we opted to actually take Fleet plus Overheal. Fleet is really great into Gragas or champions like Xerath that have constant poke, um, so that you can avoid the skill shots here. This is the bush that I always emphasize. This bush is so OP, guys, because it allows you to see invades, it allows you to jump on your mid level 1, and also it allows you to cut off the enemies without them even knowing it. Here we can see an invades happening. If the enemies actually run here, to get away from my teammates, I'm already there to cut them off. So we sort of, or if they're in that bush as well, right? We're, we're kind of pincering them from two sides. Whenever you invade like this, if you see nobody, make sure to park yourselves in this bush because a lot of the time this will mean that you're getting invaded on one of the other sides and the enemy will come from base or the enemy is simply AFK like we saw here. And this bush is perfect for punishing that. And we get a really, really nice start. Make sure if you do get a kill level one, you always recall, buy your item, buy an extra HP pot, always try and buy out, right? Spend as much gold as you can. So if you have 400 gold, you know, if I buy three pots and a dagger, that seems a little excessive. Like, what are the chances that I need three pots when I already have TP? So it makes more sense to just buy out an, a, a longsword and uh, two potions. And, um... And we come back to lane, we also have to remember that whenever you guys get an assist, an assist or a kill level 1, doesn't have to be a kill, but even if you just get an assist, that will give you the level up off the first 6 creeps. So be prepared, put yourself within range of jumping, right? So don't jump level 1, make sure that you wait for the 6 creeps of the initial wave to die, and as soon as that 6 creep is about to uh, fall, you just jump in straight away, uh, knowing that you got that level up and you got that XP lead on the enemy. Uh, you know, fit in a couple autos here and there if you can, stack up your overheal as well if you do play this page, so you take as little damage from the minions as possible. He does a great job sidestepping out E there, we kind of... Uh, Placed it a little bit poorly for our for our jump, but it is what it is. Uh, we still got push, we still got prior. We're just trying to fit in a couple autos here and there because we do know that he has to walk up fairly close uh, to land his ability and to actually uh, be able to last hit. But uh, yeah, uh, we're not we're not too fast about taking a little bit of damage just because we know there's a big wave coming in. That's the benefit of this build with fleet is that you can heal off the wave quite a bit. So short trades like that, one ability for one ability, couple autos for one ability. That's definitely in your favor. Now we hit level three. We know that the gank is coming. We went to ward on this timer, right? The 215 to 230. We went a little bit too late actually, um, and we get punished for it, but. It is what it is. I think I could have just gotten out there if I didn't try to attack Nidalee back, but I kind of egoed it. I was like, hey, you know, uh, I want to get some damage back, and uh, I died for it. It is what it is, but this is the benefit of running TP, guys. So I always say, just run TP instead of Ignite. You know, if you just run TP, you die. Oftentimes, the Ignite champion is the one that's in trouble here, even if the Gragas actually backed off there. You know, even if he actually left the lane and and recalled, I would have still shoved that wave, denied a full wave, denied the next wave, and had a, a free turn to move into his jungle. Um, now, this was kind of a bad ward. It's good for me to use this turn. Whenever it's before five minutes, guys, there's no use in hitting the tower, because you just don't do any damage, right? The, the tower protection, the plate protection is online. So make sure that if you push a wave pre-five minutes, you use that wave to either recall. If your opponent isn't base, you either use it to recall, you use it to roam, or you use it to ward. Don't ever use it to try and get plating damage. It's just not worth it. You're not going to make any significant progress. Now, here we actually check the next wave, and we see, okay, this is a cannon wave. So if, it's, if you see that, you know, there's a roam opportunity on a cannon wave you can just leave because you're not going to lose too much mid for doing it um, it's going to take longer for the enemy to actually shove that wave and then obviously it's going to take longer for your tower to deny you creeps and uh, yeah look this looks like an attractive kill double buffs aatrox we, we went the long way because we weren't sure if it would be warded but if we can go this way then of course um, it's 100 percent uh, full proof and uh, we do get nidalee flash here as well and we, we even go a little bit deep. Now, this is actually really bad chasing this Nidalee because every single second that we go forward here to trade on Nidalee, we're actually losing farm mid. So it's really important that, again, you just cut your losses. As soon as you're done with the play, um, you kind of just go back to mid lane. But here, Nidalee is uh, going in, inting back in for some reason. Not really sure what's going on. This is the classic, you know, 
mid to high diamond games, this is what they look like. People have pretty reasonable mechanics, but their decision making is very questionable. So um, a lot of the time, even though the correct play there is to walk mid, right, and just to grab all the farm and... But we, we have to make the wrong decision because the enemy is also making the wrong decision. You know, their decision, that Nidalee's decision to walk into river is only wrong if we actually punish her. But if we just move mid lane and without moving our camera, we're not adapting to what's happening in our screen. You know, we're not going to be able to get that free gold off Nidalee. And, and uh, that's a missed opportunity because uh, she will certainly punish your teammates if they do the same. Uh, we know that Gragas hasn't based. He's greeted a lot mid lane. He did not follow our rules. Look at that. He could have used that wave that he pushed in to actually recall because he knew it was pre five minutes. He didn't get a single plate. You know, he had what, two or three waves pushing out of our tower. Also guys, whenever whenever the opponent isn't there to stop you, make sure that you stand still and tank the cannon and put your E on the cannon. Because if you stand still and tank it, then the, the minions will line up in a way that you'll get all seven creeps with your explosion. You will hit everything. You'll get six or seven creeps with your E, okay? But if you start, if you if you order the cannon and kite backwards, then the way that the minions will line up, you'll only get your E on the melees and the cannon. You won't be able to hit the back wave with your E. So that's just an, a nice a nice little neat trick on Tristana here. Also, you can see I'm standing kind of outside of the fountain there. I don't know if you noticed, but you don't actually have to be in the fountain. The, the buy range is actually a little bit more generous than the healing range even. So you can still buy buy items when the fountain is no longer healing you so you can save an extra second by standing pretty much outside of the edge of the fountain uh, giving yourself a head start back to lane and uh, yeah we get back to lane but feeling really really good you saw that i was waiting for a long sword whenever again if you have the choice of buying a dagger or a long sword just buy whatever's more expensive right because you already have a natural attack speed steroid you really don't need more you know, if you can't buy a recurve bow, then just buy a longsword. Yes, this doesn't build into Kraken Slayer, but look, chances are on my next reco, I'm probably going to be on 700, 800 gold, something like that. I'll just buy a recurve bow flat out, you know, so it's totally fine to buy components from your next item. Now here we get the plate, and again, we're not greeting for the next plate because we know it's unrealistic to get. We're just going to play here to deny him three three minions worth of XP. We're trying to blind dodge the E because we know he's in that bush. You know, he was fogging through river. He's obviously coming back to lane. And we managed to just, you know, bait out some abilities from him. Uh, but most importantly, just deny the XP on those minions. And here, we're feeling very comfortable. We're ready to buffer the Grag Assault if he throws it out. We're trying to just kind of bait it out because as soon as he throws out that Grag Assault, he really has nothing left to threat us with. And uh, we can always buffer the Grag Assault or the Grag Assault E as long as he doesn't throw them both out together. Uh, then it gets a little bit tricky. And just trying to weave in an auto attack here and there. That's really all the Tristana's about. It's not about, you know, killing him until he gets super low. And then once he does get super low, boom, we get the kill. Now here we tried to actually, uh, we tried to actually duke back and uh, wanted to recall at Wolves, but unfortunately the Knight was still on us. He had the vision, and uh, we ended up dying. Uh, I think either way we probably weren't going to be able to get out there just because our Viega was already in the top side of the map. Yeah, it's a bit too far for him to help us, but you know it is what it is. Uh, at the end of the day, that's definitely a worthwhile um, one for one. Obviously we did give away the bounty to Nidalee, which isn't great. Uh, but we did deny Gragas a plate, uh, we denied him a wave, we got a plate, you know, we got the solo kill, it's, for our game, this is great. You know, for Nidalee's game, this is also great, but at the end of the day, when you play solo kill, you guys gotta be confident that if you get the same amount of gold, if you get a thousand gold and your, you know, excuse me, enemy jungle gets a thousand gold, you should be able to use that gold better, okay? So just be confident in your own decisions and be happy with getting gold on yourself instead of denying the enemy gold. I think that's always the healthiest way to play the game. Here we know Gragas has no E, so we're not afraid of him at all, we just jump in, get some free damage, you know, that's kind of how you should play the Zed matchup as well. When Zed has no Q, just jump forward like that in lane and, uh, uh, yeah, just just get some free damage and just be respectful. You know, this is the six seconds where you have to be a little bit respectful on Tristana uh, because we have no W. So we're making sure we lean towards the side where we have vision on, right, guys? You just lean towards the side. It doesn't matter that he's defending this tower. We just ignore him. We just ignore him. We hit the tower. Make sure that your E explosion doesn't pull the aggro. Pretty much the only way we can die here is if we let him CC us after he after we take the aggro from the E explosion. So every time your E is about to explode on the tower, just walk away, play it safe. Uh, there's no there's no reason to try to min max an extra auto attack. And uh, yeah, just slowly chip away at the tower. This is what Tristana's all about against melee champions. You, you kind of ignore them, you don't try to kill them. You just kind of hit the tower, kill the tower. Um, it's pretty different to, you know, the Cassio game that I uploaded yesterday where it was just, uh, you know, looking for roams on Tristana. You don't need to look for roams because you can actually make progress on the structures. And uh, the structures pretty much guarantee gold. You know, once you do break that mid tower, it's going to make roaming so much easier because, you know, he's going to be able to, he's going to have to catch the wave so much deeper, uh, you know, closer to his base. And he's going to be so, um, so, so, so 
so late to the play following you around. We see that Gragas just trying to force a play on us, but we also do know that, um, you know, there's, there's minions in front of him, so he can't actually E us. And uh, we do end up getting the kill, and we're feeling very frisky here. We go for the double kill. I think if I had lethal tempo, um, I'd definitely get the double kill in Italy there, but unfortunately, uh, we do have fleet, so it doesn't quite work out for us. We, you know, we're missing just that one or two extra autos there. Uh, maybe the lethal tempo extra range as well to get that kill. But again, it's totally fine. You know, we've done our job. It's it's okay to limit test once you've done your job. And our job was kill our laner, deny the wave, get the mid tower. Beautiful. You know, our game is going very well. Um, and it doesn't matter too much if the enemy Lulu comes and kills us or the enemy Italy comes and kills us. Because at the end of the day, um, you know, Tristana can outcarry most champions. Uh, it's only certain things like Yasuo or Cassiopeia that you have to worry about giving gold to them. But... Um, pretty much everything in this game is killable. We saw an angle to TP top lane. Pro they probably didn't need us. Now this is a big mistake from Cho'Gath. Is Cho'Gath should be basing and running mid here, in my opinion, because if Cho'Gath stays for this top tower, Aatrox will simply TP in and prevent him from taking any plates. You know, if Cho'Gath tries to get even one plate here, Aatrox will TP back in time, cancel Aatrox, uh, cancel Cho'Gath's base, and Cho'Gath will not be able to get this extra wave, he will not be able to get any plates, and uh, it's much better for him to just recall and go mid lane. So whenever you guys do a roam play like this, and uh, you have two solo laners alive, in my opinion, the framework for who should recall and who should stay to push the plates is whoever has the higher HP count, more resources, flash, or whatever it is, should be the one that stays, right? Because if I stay top lane there, even if Aatrox TP's in, I'm just going to continue harassing him on the tower. I'm going to continue pushing him because I don't need to recall. I don't have enough money to base. I have full mana, full cooldowns, full everything, you know? So um, I could continue playing top lane, getting the most out of that lane, whereas the mid lane, there's nothing for me to get. You know, I just catch the wave. Uh, Choigath could do the exact same thing. So I think it's just about putting the champion... Um, that can do the most with the push, right? They can stick, uh, stay around the longest in that lane, get the most out of that kill, the most resources. Um, that's kind of my mentality on it. So again, in this game, my trigger didn't listen to me, so we ended up just dropping three plates mid and uh, a massive, uh, a massive wave as well. It was very inefficient, but it is what it is. You can't really get frustrated in, in uh, you know, mid diamond dealer. This is just what's going to happen. People don't understand why you want them to do something, so they have that sort of teenage rebellious. Uh, uh, mindset, or perhaps it's just ignorance is bliss, you know, it could be uh, either one. Here, for example, I would really love for Zeri to, to go mid lane because uh, their, their bot lane is mid, but Zeri wants to go for the plates, which is, again, that's fine, I guess, but... I mean, should I be mid lane? I guess I should be mid lane. Maybe I'm bot lane on the wrong wave. It's just very hard to tell. Generally, when your lane, you know, swaps like this, you should match an AD carry, but my Zeri didn't match, and so it just it just becomes very, very difficult for us because we're bleeding mid waves. We're in the wrong place at the wrong time, but it's my job to be bot lane, right? It is your job on Tristana to be in the lane that has plates. If you're fed like this, as soon as you break the mid tower, your job is just to get plates in the other lanes. That is your job. And whenever you see something like this, guys, you have 2,000 gold, you know you don't want to fight this because you have 2,000 gold. So just be confident and ping your teammates away. I knew that this was going to be a bad fight. No matter how it looks, no matter how we execute here, this is always going to be a bad fight. I'm, I'm 2,100 gold down. I could have my second item, you know. Um, instead, I opted for the fight. Yes, you know, this is kind of a bit of a triumph camp there. If we had triumph, we would have survived. That's why I do love triumph in some games, but... You know, we ended up trading one for one for Gragas. Yes, we could have played it better mechanically, but the reason why we felt like we had to force it there is because if we go to if we go to our teammates there and we play the front to back, the Gragas has a perfect flank. He can just throw a cask, potentially knock us into the rest of his team, and, it, and that, that team fight looks horrible, right? So uh, it was just a bad dragon. There was no urgency for us to start it. We should just ping our team back. We should just complete our recall. And uh, if they want to int, they can int. We will just run top of base. Our whole team dies a dragon. No worries. We'll take the top tower. We'll kill Aatrox. Uh, that should have been the decision. But, you know, I succumb to peer pressure just like you guys. It's completely natural. No matter what level you guys are, um, it's normal uh, to sort of follow decisions without assessing them. Um, and it's definitely something you should try and avoid, but it will happen over time. You can never really fully get rid of it. You just you, you can just kind of tone down on it. But yeah, I think the build for Tristana is always Navori. Um, I don't think you should ever go IE just because the reposition from Navori is so good. Now here we're actually focusing Lulu instead of Jinx because we saw, we actually pressed tab and we saw that Lulu, Jinx only has a Noon Quiver and Lulu actually has a Bounty. So normally you'd obviously be hitting the AD carry, right? But because here we know that the, the Lulu is actually worth more money than the Jinx, 
Um, we try and kill Lulu first because we know we can never die to the Jinx. And uh, make concern now is taking the tower, pushing plus one wave as always. So we just ping our Thresh back because we do want that solo gold. There's really nothing uh, for Thresh to get here apart from just leeching XP, right? He should already have reset. Uh, started running towards Rift Herald, maybe set up some vision. Um, looked for a pick on Aatrox, whatever it is, but certainly nothing for him to get in this lane. And uh, we do know that most likely, even though we can't see everybody on the map, we do know that most likely uh, they should be uh, on this Rift Herald, right? Because that's the only objective available. They got some kills. And so we do take our base. Now here we could have gotten cancelled, which would have been a bit unfortunate. Uh, but we just assume that she's probably not going to zap this until she clears the whole wave. And uh, we see a place happening without even kind of assessing it. We just TP in because we know we've spent all of our money. We are so strong. We should be able to clean this up. These are definitely the angles. This is why you take Teleport on Tristana because of these mid to late game flank angles where you can jump in, get the reset, jump again, chase, and uh, get a whole bunch of kills. I think here we should have kind of preemptively altered him away, like altered him to the left a little bit. This would have been a, an easier sequence to get, but this is also another one of those ones where I think if we have lethal tempo, it's a lot easier to... Uh, to make this work and we get very lucky there i'll be honest that was not my intention i was just trying to knock the nidalee away before her q animation would go off and kill us but suddenly uh, somehow she got the angle to get knocked into gragas and we got a double bomber there that was a uh, very satisfying to watch uh, a little highlight clip and uh, we grab a we grab an extra tower to boot but yeah look uh, in this kind of a games these kind of lobbies you just have to play for yourself resources on yourself as long as your champion doesn't have any direct counters like you know, Windwall or Braum or something, you can really kill anyone on their team. You can kill everybody, so gold on you matters way more uh, than gold on your teammates, matters way more than objectives. You know, it's all about being selfish. Um, here, ideally, we should have gone bot lane to take this bot tower because this is the freest gold on the map. This is the only free gold left. Uh, that's very easy for us to get, right? If we walk up to this tower, well, how do they engage on us? How do they stop us from getting this tower? You know, what, what's their CC? It's just Lulu Polymorph. That's it. Lulu Polymorph... Gragas engage, but we can always buffer his ultimate. So, uh, really, there's no, there's nothing for us to be afraid uh, when sieging towers. But we just saw that uh, Aatrox was looked like he was going to push up this wave. So we're trying not to show. This is something you should do. Just kind of put yourself in the closest position you can. This won't work in in you know super high elo games. I'd say Grandmaster Challenger. This won't work. That this guy will not walk up. He'll walk towards his teammates, or he'll do the jungle camps, etc. Uh, but in the lower ranks, this will work every time. As long as you don't show on the wave, they will just assume that you're not there, even though they're not actually assessing, well, is there something else for Tristana to do on the map? Chorigaf is bot lane, Zeri is mid. Really, it doesn't make sense for Tristana to be anywhere but top lane. So if she's not showing, it's probably because I'm getting cheese, so I just have to find something else to do. Um, but yeah, in lower MMRs, it's definitely you know a consistent thing you could do. Just kind of uh, stay out of vision, put yourself right next to the wave in fog, and uh, engage when you can. And we see here the Gragas used his E, but um, we actually kind of mess up here and don't ult straight away. We didn't expect that damage from him. He he did a lot of damage. He also has the Ser Ser Seraph's shield, and uh, we do that. That's a very very bad death for us because that was a really great time to break open their base. We saw where four of their champions are at the dragon, and uh, we pretty much have infinite sustain with our bloodthirst our fleet and uh, overheal right so as long as we don't die to Gragas if we just ignore the Gragas and hit the tower we can pretty much get that full tower there get the inhib and uh, back off before the enemy team is able to arrive so that's a big missed opportunity um, big overforce uh, definitely pushing our limits for no reason uh, whether we get that Gragas kill or not we would still get the you know the inhib regardless the only thing that prevents us from getting the inhib is dying so uh, it is what it is, you know, uh, it does happen. Sometimes you get a little bit uh, bloodthirsty, a little bit cheeky. Um, but he played it well, of course. He did play it well with the ultimate there, knocking me out of my W. And uh, yeah, we see that they're on Dragon, but we just know that we can't make it here in time. You know, we have no setup, and uh, I, I should really just be pushing this bot wave. I should not be walking with my team here. I, I checked the Dragon HP. I knew that I couldn't make it to Dragon, so like this was just complete waste of 20 seconds, 15 seconds, walking towards my team and then walking backwards. Just accept that, look, uh, we made the mistake top, so there's nothing to get bot lane. We're, we're just playing for the wave, just playing to push. Now here, we don't know where anybody is, so there's a chance that there's three people, you know, either waiting in this tri bush for me or waiting in this pixel bush, so we're just not going to show. We're not going to show for a second. We're only going to show once we're actually going to miss minions, um, just to give them that, you know, if they were going to 
going to cheese us here. They're not going to sit there for 10, 15, 20 seconds. You know, they'll sit there for five seconds and then they'll just give up. They'll be like, okay, Tristana's just not going to push up this wave. So you just be, be, be willing to take that little pause like we did, right? Just take that little pause and uh, make yourself feel safe by, by pushing up on a random timer. And here we see that Aatrox actually uses his E for some reason, then walks back into the bush anyway. So... Um, you know, for some reason, when you play low Lamar games, you can just sit in, a, in the most obvious bush. But as long as you're actually not in vision, as long as you just stay in fog of war, eventually they just assume that you're not there. For some reason, I don't know why. Like, there's nowhere else for me to be. But um, you know, Aatrox just kind of uh, disregards it as a possibility, or he walks up to sweeper, which is kind of pointless. I mean, you walk up to sweeper, you're already mainly range against me. You know, it doesn't matter that you see me; I'll still jump in. And uh, yeah, look, this is how you play Tristana in. Um, you know, in games where you're the main carry, you just sit in the side lanes. You sit in the side lanes, you kill your side laner, you kill the tower, another guy comes to defend, you just kill him as well. You just keep killing people. And uh, yeah, this was a bit shocking, guys. I just died from full health to AP Gragas. Uh, that was uh, a little bit mind-boggling there. I think if we play that again, same as the top play, there's both mistakes, kind of two of the same, um, the same issue, right? Like, we just, if we just played it slower, if we just killed the tower first, we could still go for the Gragas kill, but then maybe it would be full health. Maybe we could dodge one of his abilities. We could buffer it instead of just tunneling on the objective. So make sure that you don't overemphasize towers if it's going to cost you your life, right? If you're already in a winning matchup, the only way that you can lose that is by, you know, not playing the 1v1. Focusing on the tower while the other guy focuses on killing you, right? Because then you're not using your abilities to dodge his abilities. You know, you're not spacing, things like that. So... Um, just be a little bit more patient. You're going to always get that tower anyway because you've got the lifesteal against most mages. You know, you take a trade on the mage, half HP for half HP. You lifesteal back up. There's still half HP. They have to go to Fountain. You grab the tower for free. Another one of those good teleports that we see, you know, we're just... All we're doing to identify whether the teleport is good is... Is our teleport behind them? That's literally it. Is our teleport behind the enemies? And if it's behind the enemies, we just TP. Okay, because uh, that's the great thing about Tristana coming from a flank. You could use your ultimate to knock the enemy into your team. You can also reposition with your W. So it's very hard for the enemy to just turn on you, right? Because you can come from the flank and then suddenly like, you know, dash away from their engage. And uh, we do the Baron here. Uh, we see that our base is kind of being taken. Nobody is defending their base. So make sure when you see this, guys, it's very, very easy to sort of react to this and be like, oh, shit, my, my structures are falling. I got to get back to defend. But then you have to think about, you know, allocation of resources. We have three people alive here. They have three people pushing our base. And our base towers are like an extra champion. You know, so we technically have... You know, 2v3 here and a 1v2 here if we consider the towers as champions. So I don't need to go back. We've already got a man advantage to defend our base. And uh, I can continue pushing just to get something in return. And uh, this is something cool you can do, right? Is the Rift Herald cannot be CC'd. It can't be interrupted. It can only be smited. Uh, you know, it's only if it dies will you get knocked out of it. So you can always feel safe to push a tower if you got the Rift Herald. And then you get the, the, the reset on the charge. And you can just uh, run straight back straight back out. Now here again, something against champions with CC. You want to do that combo that I showed in my video, the auto, auto, E, uh, e auto, auto, alt, auto, because uh, uh, you pretty much get all of your auto attacks off before the enemy can CC, CC you. And uh, if they die in those four hits, then it doesn't matter that I, we got polyed at the end there, right? Like if we got polyed and she was one HP, there's no way we can get that kill because she would run away. We won't be able to jump and uh, the Aatrox would be there to defend her. But uh, yeah, just a nice little cheese. That's kind of Tristan in the late game. If you do get fed, you can sit in any bush and do that, you know, four hit combo just to one shot people. Very satisfying, of course. And uh, once you get full build on Tristan, I'm very close to full build. You can see here, I'm pretty much three items, two and a half items ahead of everybody else in the map. Make sure you don't just continually do the same thing. All right, the plan, the game plan changes. At this point, we have to end the game as soon as possible because we cannot get stronger. So the game gets more and more outside of our control the longer it goes, right? Because people become closer and uh, items to us, we can't punish the limits um, as well. Here, you should always kind of push the wave first and then fog out of vision but we see that the fight is just uh it just continues going so we just run down even even though we were in vision the enemy team didn't respect it and unfortunately we didn't have a blue trinket otherwise this could have been a pentakill this would have definitely been a pentakill actually but uh, we didn't have a blue trinket but the job's done we won the fight and we just pulled the pu push the structures like i said this is where you should really be uh, sticking around as long as possible uh, when you get this kind of this kind of a lead because this is where we have to end the game it does not get easier than this and uh, yeah, just be confident. Remember that you've got the lifesteal, you've got the overheal. You can just ignore people, jump forward, 
And this is what you play for when you play Tristani. You know, moments like these where you just feel invincible. You're an AD carry, you're a frontline, you're an assassin, you're a tank, you're everything. Quite literally everything with the overheal here. You know, I have almost 3000 HP with overgrowth, uh, overheal. And uh, obviously we've still got the shield bow as well, which is another 500. So with 3.5k HP, 30% um, lifesteal or something like that. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of a, a bit of a mechanics max towards the end there. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, I will see you guys in the next video.